Hey, Rest Friends, it's Iridian. Welcome to the Rest Friend Report. If you are new here, welcome. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on anything Rest Friends related. Teddy and I recap NXT and AEW for you every week. So if you missed out or if you want to hear what we thought about it, you're in the right place. This week, I'm starting you off with NXT. And let me tell you, we are on the road to NXT TakeOver 30. And the night started off hot with Rhea Ripley versus Dakota Kai in a number one contenders match. Whoever won would go and face Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. Rhea was looking brutal in this match, all right? She was dominating. There was a moment where she was outside the ring. She gave Dakota an electric chair on the apron. Dakota's head was like, it, like, it was, oh my God, it was crazy. I don't even have words. It was insane. It was so good. It was probably one of my favorite moments of the match. Everything was looking Rhea's way, and next thing you know, Mercedes Martinez comes out of nowhere, hits Rhea, Rhea has no idea what's happening, Dakota hits the GTK, and it's over. Dakota goes on to face Io Shirai at NXT TakeOver 30. But Mercedes comes back in the ring and continues to beat up Rhea. Like, why? There was no need, girl. You don't need to, but whatever. Next, we got Bronson Reed versus Shane Thorne. Bronson was looking to build his momentum since he is already in this ladder match for the North American title at NXT TakeOver, and it was a good match. It was a little on the shorter side, but I didn't mind it. Both men looked really, really strong, but Bronson Reed took the win, building up his momentum to NXT TakeOver. Then we cut to a scene from earlier on before NXT where Pat McAfee was talking to Shawn Michaels. I don't know, that was kind of weird. Also, people keep getting kidnapped in these parking lots, in these NXT parking lots. It's dangerous. You will get snatched up by El Legado del Fantasma, all right? We move on to a triple threat match. Damian Priest, Oni Larkin, and the new member to this team, Ridge Holland, who is on NXT UK, but I guess he's now making the transition to NXT in the US. Damian Priest is such a star. This man is a star. He really did earn this win in this match. If you don't watch any other match, well, there's another match that you probably should watch. One of the matches that you should watch if you didn't is definitely this one because it was a powerhouse of a match. And this match was really, really high stakes. So the winner would go on to get added into this ladder match for the NXT North American Championship. So Damian Priest now joins the two other men, is it two or three? Bronson Reed and Dexter Loomis were already in this match. So now it was going to be Damian Priest, Dexter Loomis, and Bronson Reed. <laughs> Moving on to Keith Lee. <laughs> Keith Lee versus Cameron Grimes. Okay, I'm going to say it. Keith Lee looks so weird walking out with only one belt. All right? Boop, 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 boop. Excuse me, I have been robbed of Keith Lee having an amazing run as double champ. Yeah, I'm just really disappointed he doesn't have two belts, and that's all I could think about during this match. Grimes was impressive, all right? He's he's um, he's um growing on me. I wasn't sure how I felt about him, but like, he's all right. We're gonna have to watch out for him. He's good. But a devastating powerbomb by Keith Lee got him the win. It was like, Cameron Grimes was like, shook. And then something really weird happened after the match. Definitely expected Karrion Cross to come out, but he didn't. He came out TikTok in a promo saying, Lee, I guess we're gonna have to do this the hard way. And oh my God, we did not want it this way. I know last week we mentioned that he's like, you're either gonna do it like this or it's gonna be the hard way. So clearly it's the hard way. Karrion Cross wants this title. He wants this match. He wants that belt. So we will just have to wait and see when this match is gonna happen. Next came an announcement from general manager William Regal saying that Dexter Loomis sustained an ankle injury in his previous match and could no longer compete in the ladder match for the NXT Universal Universal title. Oh my God. For the North American Championship. He said that Finn Balor was complaining that he didn't get pinned, that Gargano was complaining. So William Regal was like, all right, if you didn't win, you're gonna be in another match. I don't know, I wasn't, it was confusing for me. Anyway, there's gonna be more matches now because Loomis can't compete. Man, Legado del Fantasma, that is just something else, something else. I love a good Spanish promo, I really do. I think it really adds, it adds something. Anyway, Hijo del Fantasma came out saying that Lucha Libre is an art and it's not a gimmick like Breezango is um, doing, like 
he said Lucha Libre is not Brazango. That's what I that's what I got out of this promo, okay? The promos were really, really good. So they beat up Brazango, and then Hijo del Fantasma grabs the mic and says, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Don't say my name again, or this will be you. And I was like, is he gonna do it? Swerve, are you gonna do it? I'm excited for that match if it happens. Hijo del Fantasma versus Swerve Scott, that's gonna be. That's a money match. Definitely a money match. There was a lot in ring, but there was also a lot out of the ring. There was many promos cut tonight, and I think that was what really helped NXT shine. So Damian Priest was in the parking lot leaving. He was going to get interviewed, and he's like, all right, make it quick. They were asking him about how he feels being in this ladder match, and he's like, don't worry, I got it. And Bronson Reed is in the back, and he's like, hey, dude, good luck. And Damian's like, I'll be back. He goes up to Bronson and says, all these little dreams that you have about becoming champion, they need to go out the window because I'm gonna be champ. And Bronson is like, well, you should be scared of me. Damien was like, well, I ain't scared of you. You ain't even thick. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm not, everything I'm saying isn't verbatim, but I'm giving you how I saw it, all right? I'm giving you my summary of what I heard. So Damien was like, I ain't scared of you. I'll meet you in the ring. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a match. Pretty sure. I'm excited for it. I, that's a match I want to see. I, Damien's a star. Star quality, bro. And Bronson, powerhouse. Next, we got Indy Hartwell versus Tegan Knox. Next, we got Indy Hartwell versus Tegan Knox. Now, we saw Indy pick up her first win against Shotzi Blackheart. Indy came into this match confident, all right? Girl was like, I beat Shotzi last week. I ain't scared of you. And Tegan was like, who? Who are you? What's happening? Anyway, Tegan ended that quick, all right? Tegan got the win. Shiny's wizard. Better luck next time, Indy. Also, during this match, we got Pat McAfee on commentary, and that was a little weird, but he was complimenting the women a lot, which I appreciated. I was like, all right, cool. Give those... Yes, give the girls compliments that they deserve, you know? And then we got the main event, which I'm pretty sure is why Pat was, like, ringside in commentary, because he was ready for Undisputed Era. He was ready for Adam Six Foot Cole, you know, Adam Six Foot Cole. The match was good. The commentary was the shining star of the main event. So everything started off all right, and then Pat McAfee started saying that Adam Cole had a small body and a big head. He talked about how Adam Cole was unprofessional, and Beth was like, whoa, calm down, bro. You know, you are a guest here. I don't appreciate how you're talking about Adam Cole. And she's like, I can't do this. Anyway, Beth was gone. She was no longer doing commentary. And Pat McAfee kept talking shit. He just kept going. And Adam Cole was like 20 feet away. I was like, bro, you better watch it. It's Adam Cole, baby. So Adam Cole confronts Pat McAfee, right? And Triple H comes out and Shawn Michaels comes out. And they're trying to separate these two who haven't even touched, all right? They were just like up in each other's faces. And they got separated by Triple H. They got separated by DX, okay? They said the X means for X amount of space that needs to be between y'all, six feet. So while all of this is happening, the match is still going on. Undisputed Era got distracted, Imperium takes the win. It doesn't matter, okay? No, nothing matters. The only thing that matters is Pat McAfee and Adam Cole almost going at it by the commentary table. All right, so Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is literally already out the door. They're like escorting him out. He's like, real professional place y'all got here, and he comes back. You know what this man had? The audacity. This man went up to Adam Cole and said, you're an itty bitty short bitch. And then he knocked Adam Cole out. Adam Cole was dead. Shawn Michaels was like checking up on him and Adam Cole was like, Adam six foot Cole got knocked out by Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee said yeet and it was over. It all happened so quick. I was so devastated. I'm like, Adam Cole, you are six feet tall. How are you going to let Pat McAfee call you an itty bitty short bitch? I was just shook. I was shook. NXT tonight had the audacity. It really did. And that recaps tonight's NXT. If you missed it, well, you just heard it from me everything that happened. Pretty intense, I know. 
Hey Rose friends, my name is Teddy and today I am here to give you my AEW Dynamite report. We started off the night with a 12-man tag team match with The Elite and FTR versus The Dark Order. Brody Lee was back in the ring and I'm so excited. Something about that man attracts me to him, like him in the ring. And I don't know, I was just so happy to see him back. In the middle of the match, it looks like Dax got injured. Um, I believe it was his knee and I'm not sure if it was real or if it was if it was part of a storyline because Hangman Page and Cash helped him out of the arena while Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks stayed behind. So I don't know if it's, I don't know how real that was. Um, but Brody Lee did win that match for the Dark Order with a discus clothesline on Hangman Page. After that, we got a little John Moxley promo with him giving Darby Allen a little bit of advice and it was a very short promo, but it got me pretty pumped up for their match later in the night. And then we got a little clip with best friends Chucky e. T and Trent arriving to the arena in Sue's minivan, which is Trent's mom. Oh, I thought that was a cute little clip. Get us prepared for the next match, which was best friends versus two-fifths of the inner circle of Santana and Ortiz. Best friends did win that match with Trent rolling up Ortiz after Santana and Ortiz attempted a street sweeper. But we are currently live at MJF campaign headquarters, and I am so excited to show you. We're not going to talk about MJF. Later on, we got Matt Hardy coming out, telling us about his plans and what he wants to do in AEW. He mentions Private Party and how he's mentoring them. He also mentioned that he tried to mentor Sammy Guevara, but he didn't want anything to do with that. So then Sammy Guevara comes out from under the ring, I believe. That's what it looked like. And attacks Matt Hardy. It was a crazy little attack with so much blood. The worst clip I've ever seen in AEW so far. So disrespectful, so rude. Santana and Ortiz just destroys Sue's minivan, which again is Trent's mom. I thought that was so disrespectful. Like they're Latinos. They should know better than to disrespect anyone's mother or their belongings. I thought that was very rude and sad. But after that, very rude and sad. After that, we got to see Cody and Matt Cardona with his AEW in-ring return versus Alex Reynolds and John Silver from The Dark Order. I think the match was meh, but Cardona did win that match for him and Cody, which to me, the interesting part was afterwards when everyone was walking out of the arena, Cody was walking out into the little circle thingies that they have on the sides with lights and Scorpio Sky is coming out he just stares at the TNT title for a couple seconds looks at Cody and walks away and they just basically mean mug each other and that made me very very excited I was like "Ooh, I need to see this match and it is gonna happen next week oh Edie's gonna watch that match live <laughs> oh <laughs> and then we got a little surprise guest Eric Bischoff as the special guest moderator for Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy's debate. It was a funny and very entertaining debate. Um, I think you guys should look up clips. Thank you. Well. I was laughing. Bischoff did say that Orange Cassidy won the debate at the end of the, of the debate and Chris Jericho obviously got pissed off. So then Hager attacked Orange Cassidy per Jericho's request, and then Jericho hit him with the Judas effect. But then come out best friends and try to save Orange Cassidy, even though he had already gotten hit with the Judas effect and he was already on the ring. As my very good friend, Joey Mayberry from Ring the Bell said, does every AEW match have to end with a brawl? That was, that was funny. Then we see Britt Baker ringside in her wheelchair with Reba and Tony Shivani. <laughs> And Britt Baker says that she chooses her assistant, Reba, to go against Big Swole. We got a little match with Big Swole versus Reba. Uh, not even a five minute match. It was funny. Um, but yeah, that's all we got from that. There's really not much to say. And for the main event, we got Darby Allen versus John Moxley for the AEW Championship. Very good match. That was a very, very good match. I think John Moxley and Darby Allen are both great in the ring, but 
in the middle of the match, we did see Warlow come out and distract the ref while MJF came in with the AEW Championship and hit John Moxley in hopes that obviously John Moxley loses and Darby Allen wins, but it didn't work. There was a couple very, very close calls for Darby Allen, and I thought we were going to have a new AEW champion, but no, John Moxley did end up winning. And Rush Friends, that was all for AEW Dynamite. Thank you guys for watching this week's episode of the Rush Friend Report, where each week Teddy and I recap NXT and AEW. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it, comment, tell us what you thought about AEW Dynamite tonight. Also, give AEW women a chance. What's going on, my dudes? What's going on, AEW? Please, we want more women segments. Like, am I wrong, guys? We need more women segments. Bye. We will see you next week.